My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Transport Fever 2 on our custom small map. This episode, we're just outside the station that we have servicing the oil refinery out by Hearn Bay. And as we can see by the telltale smoke, one of our vehicles is making its way in. I think that's on four times acceleration there. Oh, that's better. Yes, obviously without the UI present, I didn't realise when I unpaused it we were still on four times, but there we go, we've reduced it back to the normal game speed now. The date is running in the background, but we shouldn't unlock anything for a few moments, if we do at all, because we are in October and we're only on half calendar speed, so we've got a bit of time for the introduction, just in case we do unlock anything when we tick over into the next year. Now, what I have done is pretty much gone against what I was talking about in the earlier episodes, in the starting episodes, and I have allowed the game to run just a little while off camera with the date paused just to allow some money to build up so we can really press on at a, a, a far greater pace in this episode and hopefully in future episodes as well. So let's bring up the user interface and there we go. We have $14 million. We are in December of 1913. And what we're going to do today in th this episode is take this train line and have it run down to the fuel refinery that we have behind this mountain here. Obviously, it's obscured by this mountain, but it is there, as we can see by the icons. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually make this a double platform. So if we lay down an extra stretch of tracks here, and you know what, while we're at it, I think it's probably not a bad idea to expand the station size just a little. In fact, let's go even further, but to do that we are going to have to demolish this section of road right here, but that's fine. And now if we return here, we can continue pushing the station outwards a little. Should that be long enough, do we think? Let's go for one more. Okay, so now we can go for some platforms, and we want the bog standard cargo platforms right at the end of the list. And there we go. As it stands right now, we don't need a platform down here, but we do need the track. So we'll, we'll leave that as it is. And what we want to do is double track this all the way to where it joins just after the level crossing right here. So let's take care of that. So there we go, that's the switch removed. Now we can just do that, and that's all good. And here we want to put in a crossover. We only need the one, we don't need a diamond for this because nothing is going to be heading back from this platform. Um, hang on, have I got that right? I don't think I have, no. Let me see here. I think we're using left hand traffic, so is that right? Yes, it is, because what we. No, it isn't. Let's just leave that for a moment. In fact, I've, I don't know why, but somehow I've got myself mightily confused here. So, just to avoid any potential mishaps or confusion, I am just going to give it a diamond. There we go. And we'll put a stopping signal there. It should have been one way, but that's fine. As long as all the others are one way, and there's not going to be any foul ups. And that's a foul up because I put it on the wrong side of the track. So we're off to a flying start today, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Now we don't need anything more than that. We only have the two trains running down here, so we don't need excessive blocking along this way. Right, so let's head over to this fuel refinery here and let's see if we can do this without causing chaos like we just did back there. Right, how many platforms do we want to start with? Well, I'm going to say we shall have one. I'm just thinking, do we want to bring the fuel on down to Long Eaton? Obviously, we do need the fuel down here. Or do we want to maybe have a tunnel and a road through this mountain range here connecting in here and just having road vehicles deliver the fuel i think we will go for in fact yeah we'll go for the uh 
the station, the two platforms. And where do we want to locate this? We don't want to do that. I There we go, that's the right keys. And I think if we have the station somewhere like that, once we put in a road connection, we should be pretty much guaranteed that we'll have an active connection between the station and the refinery. Let's just see here. I mean, we could just keep it like that. It's going to serve its purpose. Yet yeah, we have the connection. Let's just rename this to the Long Eaton Fuel Refinery. There we go. So our tracks are going to head out here, skirt around the feet of this mountain before linking into this station here. And I think we will have some outbound tracks that come perhaps down here. And maybe we'll have a cargo station in this area with a little interim road service that takes from the from the rail depot over into Long Eaton. But all that's for a little bit later. For now we need to focus and get these tracks connected all together. So let's start with a nice flat and straight, well not flat necessarily, but a nice straight runoff track here. And the reason we're going for a nice straight track is if we want to extend these cargo platforms down the way we can. And then we want to curve and head towards the fuel refinery over there, sorry the oil refinery. We are coming from the fuel refinery. And at this point we will start double tracking all of our runs. So let's do that presently. And we want to keep heading this way. And we should be getting somewhere nearby, yes. We still need to curve some more. Trying to just make sure we maintain a decent speed throughout all of this. Although as it stands now we are going to have a rather tight curve into the station. However, as we often say, because we're either stopping at the station or we're just about to leave so we're not at full speed, a slightly reduced curve here in terms of the speed isn't the end of the world. And we'll have that like so. So they will come on through, obviously they will pick up and unload what they need to do here first before departing and heading down here and heading into this station right here. Now while we're in the track building mode, we may as well go ahead and put down our freight station somewhere around here. And where do we want to put this? We could have it all the way down here because then in the uh, in the future we can make it utilize this industry at the same time so let's go ahead and do that so if we put it in that sort of location we didn't mean to do that and we'll call this the long eaten freight exchange there we go and then run some tracks between here and here, we can use our existing fleet of trains, all two of them, to do this entire run because there's no need for a mixed consist. They're all using the oil wagons for this. So let's go ahead and get everything linked up. So again, we're gonna head straight out, like so. And we will have a tunnel through this mountain rather than skirting through here coming around and in, in like so so we're going to plow straight on through this mountain just up ahead okay so i think we're not quite lined up but we're not too far away so this is a good place to plow through with our tunnel and if we go like that how does a tunnel look? Do we have any other textures? No, we don't. So we'll stick with the default because that's all we have. Let's just turn that a little bit more upwards like so. There we go. And bring in the parallel track like that. So fairly long tunnel, but that's okay. Now all we need to do is connect it into the station and we are good to go. We need some signal work, of course, so we can do that. So we are left hand drive so let's have one just on the approach to the fuel refinery there we'll have another just on this corner here 
and perhaps one just on this little bit of straight track right here. We shall double all of those up, so we'll have... Where is the signal? Let's try and get it level with that signal. Something like that. And again, wanting to get this level if we can, or as close as possible, that'll do. And finally, same again right here, like that. So all this is fine. Turns out we don't need that diamond at all, so we'll be able to get rid of that soon. But for now, we need it. In fact, what we do need is we don't need that, that side of the diamond. Just, come on, just there. Because obviously our trains are left-hand drive, so we need to cross over to access this platform here. Which then means when we leave this station, we need to get back over onto the left. So just as we leave, something like that. And then our trains are back where they should be. On the way back, they can just stick to the left. Although, thinking about it now, it would make a little bit more sense to do something like this. Let's get the platforms. And we'll utilise platform 2 when we are dropping off the crude oil and picking up the refined oil. In which case then, let's just make sure we change that to here, over to terminal 2. Yes, I know you're unhappy, so let's pause it. So, you come in on the left. We don't need this anymore, at all. What we can do is put some more signals here, just so we're, we know what we're doing. Where's that signal gone? I just saw it. It's over here. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. So, we come on through, stop along this outer platform now, platform number two before heading back out, so we don't need that anymore either. Where's our nearest set of signals? Just back there. Let's go ahead and add just one more set here, and that's to control the flow of the trains in and out of this station. So you're going to come all the way through here, all the way down. We've got a few signals down there. Here, again, we want you on platform number two, and then you're going to leave down this way, through the tunnel and into the freight exchange. So we'll have a set there. We don't want to use these semaphores inside of the tunnel because I don't know how illuminated they are. So for immersion's sake, we'll keep them out in the daylight where they're clearly visible for the driver. And maybe just one more just prior to the crossroads there. And then you're going to come in here, you're going to drop off the fuel on this platform. So what we need is on the departure, we need to cross over like that. So now what we need to do is first of all, well, we need to connect this. So let's do that. So we want a road like so, with a sweeping bend into the main connection road just there. That should all now be linked together. And it's also linking up to these two, which could be quite handy, because then when we take the fuel and bring it into Long Eaton, we can use either of these two right here. But what we want to do first of all is go to the oil freight line, go to the manage line option, and we need to add some extra, extra steps in now. So after the refinery, we want another station, and that's this station right here. And after that station, we want our final station, which is right here. Because of this, the way the signals are, they're doing exactly what they need to in terms of their track allocation. But what we want to do here now is sort these orders out. So we want to load. No, we don't. We want to load that, and we want to unload that. But we only want to take 50%. That's right. And then at the fuel refinery, we want to load that, but unload that. And at the Long Eaton Freight Exchange, we are just unloading fuel and not picking anything up. Let's just reset that to 100, actually. Now, I think we're going to, I think this is diminishing returns here. We know it's 2 to 1 here. Is it also 2 to 1 here? No, it's 1 to 1. Okay. Okay, so now we need to 
amend our vehicles on this line, our trains. And what we want to do is to just add one extra. That way we have a nice round even number so we can have a half load without having 0.5 of a tank full. So we'll do that. That's going to cost 4 million to equip our trains with one additional tanker. And we can unpause it again now. I think what it might also be worth doing is just experimenting with this. Now we want mm, we don't we want load if available, yes. And we do want these on 50%. And 50% right there. Because they can't take a full load because of the diminishing, you know, the two to one ratio we have over here. Maximum stop time, let's say we'll let you wait for a minute and a half. I think that should be enough. Over here, it doesn't really matter. You're not picking anything up anyway. And over here, you shouldn't take, you know, there should always be a full load awaiting the train's arrival. So there, to there, to there, to there. Yes. Now, before we start drawing any demand for fuel down here, we need to complete the delivery line, of course. So we'll make use of the long eaten tool forge depot right here. And let's configure this. Go to cargo. Put in some extra platforms just there. Then we want to head into Long Eaton itself. Find out where's an ideal location to drop off the fuel. Now we don't want it somewhere where it could get stuck behind our buses. So what we want to do is come up here, along here, and then drop off maybe there before heading back out down this way and then rejoining the road just here. While we're here, we'll also upgrade these roads. Uh, we can't afford to do that one, that's a shame. But never mind. Ah, our bus has come down this way. That's unfortunate because then our buses will start to get slowed down by any, uh, any other trucks that are unloading just here. That's... That's a bit of a bugger, isn't it? Well, what we could do then is go the opposite way. And if we have it so they come up this way, drop off, say, there. Nothing heads up this way, so it's not going to cause any delays on our bus services. Perfect. Right, we want some waypoints for all of this just to make sure they're going the right way about it. So. If we have a waypoint there, come up here, drop off, and a waypoint there. You should come that way anyway, but just for completion's sake, we will add it in. And you're coming from the tool forge. You want to take this road here. Not the bus. No, that is right. That's not the bus stop. Take that waypoint there before heading down. Now you're taking fuel, so let's give you an appropriate color like that. You're only taking fuel, so let's just make sure we specify that right here. Do we want them to wait for a full load? Hmm. I'm going to say no, because we don't want to risk getting in the way of our tool pickups if, you know, when they're waiting, so we'll not do that. Let's just quickly rename this, and this will be T4 Truck, and this is the Long Eaten Fuel delivery there we go obviously we need some trucks as well so let's pick some of those up right now and we'll go for the Ben's tarpaulin trucks and to start with I think even two should be more than enough because it's going to be quite a while per delivery on the fuel run so and there we go away they go right so let's see if this is working as intended then so you should pick up, ah, you've not picked up anything. Is that because you've not had time to refine anything? Yeah, I think that's all it is. So this is gonna be an empty run down here, but that's okay. You should hopefully have a half load, 27 and 27, so that's fine. And then when you get down here, you should also take up 27, although, Yes, you didn't know. Okay, it's going to take a little while. Obviously, the first train didn't drop off 27 units of refined oil to be processed. So we're not going to have many waiting. But on the next complete loop, we should be, well, it should hopefully 
be working as we want it to do and as we're intending it to do so full load here get as much of this as you can which is half of it and then get as much of this as you can which in terms of your consist capacity is also 50 percent before heading here dropping it off and then heading all the way back and there should be no interruptions because the pass-through platform that they're returning on is not the same platform that they are dropping off or being loaded on the only time they will have to wait for one another is on this little stretch right here but there's only two of them it's a nice long train line they should space themselves out nicely and in fact we could probably have maybe even three or four trains running down here we're not going to be able to afford that right now so that's something for the future though but never mind so what we'll do now is we'll pause the date speed and we'll just let this line settle down and get settled in and we'll check if we have to make any amendments to our loading orders especially at this station here and this station right here so we'll pick it back up in maybe five minutes time obviously in terms of, of the uh, the video playback that will only be a few seconds because i will cut out all the uh, the background running and we'll see how things are looking so i shall see you in a moment okay then ladies and gentlemen welcome back so the line is working as i'd hoped it would at this station they will wait until they pick up 27 units of the refined oil and then at this station they will wait until they pick up 27 units of fuel now because obviously this line was already in operation before we got started and there was a little mix up here you can see we do have a little surplus every time we leave the station here we're usually for about 23 and there's a handful over here as well now we could let them pick that up but I'm happy enough to leave that as it is. Now the problem is this line has uh, had its finances negatively impacted because of this change as we can see here. Before we were making lovely profits just running back and forth shipping the crude oil to the, uh, the refinery over here. But as we can see now because we then have to travel down here and then down here and then travel all the way back i mean this is a killer bit here this is quite a long journey back with nothing to show in terms of profit because we can't sell anything here or here or here the next time we make money after dropping off is when we sell the crude oil right here so yes that's had a negative effect here now I do think we would be able to solve that by having extra trains running down here at the minute we only have the two. So if we had say four or maybe even six then the time between each drop off point wouldn't be quite so bad because at one point you know we'll we could end up with two trains running back here and we're waiting around for any of them to make money whereas if we have a more steady stream of trains coming down here then we've got that constant trickling income. So I think that's what we're going to do next. Obviously, we can't do that right now. It's going to cost us a lot of money to purchase two extra trains to run down here. We're probably looking at about 11 million, I would guess. Let's just have a quick look here. Uh, no, maybe it would cost. In fact, let's just see how much would it cost to duplicate these trains. So we have the PCM and is it? No, or is it the PLR? I can't remember. And we have six carriages so if we wanted to buy two more of those let's just have a quick look and see what we're looking at it is the plm so we want two so one plm cargo and six yes i said 11 so 12 million so i wasn't too far away so what we're gonna do is this episode is well we're gonna wrap this one up here today there's not much more we can do uh, we need to fix our finances to do that we're gonna let you see how we actually cash flow positive for most of the time now hmm I think this is where we yeah this is actually where we spent all that money that we'd accumulated yeah we're struggling here so what we might have to do is extend the credit line now that has a negative impact of course because we're then paying more interest and if you remember the interest is scaled up a little higher than usual so we have to be very very careful about that so what we're gonna do then like I said we'll end this one here for today we'll just hop on board in fact let's have this train here that's on its way back and between episodes I'll keep an eye on the finances if we are slowly trickling up then I'll let it accumulate a little in the background 
not necessarily going to wait till we hit that 12 million mark because there's other things we could do to boost our income and you know set up extra lines for instance and that would be a good way to generate extra income and using that uh, increased income we could then duplicate our trains on this line so I hope you have enjoyed the episode and the series. If you have, then please consider hitting that thumbs up button there just down below. It really does help. Obviously with the YouTube arithmetic and the algorithm and what have you. And if you're new to the channel, uh, it'd be very nice if you would could consider hitting that subscribe button as well. That is a great way to show support and again it's all part of the youtube game that you have to play shall we say i did notice we are close to 1000 subscribers which is well <laughs> that is just insane and to all of you who have subscribed i do thank you very very much and to anybody who wants to consider subscribing to let us try get over that 1000 threshold that would be absolutely insane but for now, all that means for me to say is, as always, ladies and gentlemen, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.